Good evening. I'd like to call this uh, Thursday, May 11th, meeting of the Tacoma School Board of Directors to order. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the flag salute. Tacoma Public Schools acknowledges that we are on the traditional, ancestral, and historical lands of the Puyallup Tribe of Indians. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Puyallup Tribe. This acknowledgement serves as the first step in honoring our nearest tribal neighbors and partners who have inhabited this region since time immemorial, and to whom we give thanks for allowing us passage to their lands. We shall intentionally create inclusive and respectful partnerships that honor indigenous cultures, histories, identities, and social political realities. General Counsel Ben Rowe, could you please call the roll? Yes. Vice President Schroeder? Here. Director Keeling? Here. Director Leon? Here. We have quorum. Great. Moving on to item six, recognition of staff, students, and community. Item five, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped adoption of the agenda. I, I was prepared to skip that <laughs> if I'm going to keep it G with you. Uh, <laughs> I move to adopt. We have a second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, comments about that? All right, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Sounds like no. Moving on to, we have an agenda and moving on to item six, for real now. Um, <laughs> item six, recognition of staff, students, and community, item 6.1. Yes, this is the uh, state holidays and civic observances. We have two in the month of May. The first, uh, 6.1a, is Asian Pacific American Heritage Day. Washington's legislature declares that May of each year will be known as Asian and Pacific American Heritage Month, and that in the fourth week of May will be des designated as a time for Washingtonians to celebrate their contributions to our state by Asian and Pacific Americans in the arts, sciences, commerce, and education. Further, the legislature encourages educational institutions, public entities, private organizations to designate time for appropriate activities in commemoration of the lives, histories, achievements, and contributions of Asian and Pacific Americans. Our second, uh, and this is a legislatively recognized day, uh, uh, legislatively recognized month, sorry. Uh, the second, Memorial Day. This is a legal holiday, a state legal holiday. Every year, Memorial Day is observed on the last Monday of May, which this year falls on May 29th. Uh, Memorial Day is a day in which Washingtonians celebrate our fallen service members, honoring their lives and sacrifices. It is also a day that we mourn collectively the loss of this important part of our community. As a reminder, Memorial Day as a state legal holiday uh, means that most state agencies are closed, including TPS schools and TPS district offices. So uh, district is closed on Monday, May 29th. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving forward to item number seven, which is the superintendent's report. There is not one this week, I understand. You got something? I just wanted to uh, take a quick uh, shout out to uh, this week is Teacher Appreciation Week and want to thank all of our staff that are out there uh, every day giving up their hearts. Um, they're truly, um, and not just our teachers, but especially our teachers this week, uh, whether you're in the classroom or you're playing a teaching role outside of the classroom, we're extremely grateful for you. Um, this is not an easy job. Um, they roll up their sleeves every day um, and it's with deep gratitude that I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And just for uh, uh, shared consciousness, the legislative wrap-up will be shared at the, w at the May 18th uh, study session. Item number eight, staff report to the board. We don't have one this week either, uh, which means we'll be moving on to item number nine, which is members of the public wishing to address the board. Uh, school board members encourage public participation. Your civil, your civil input is appreciated. Board members will not respond to your comments during the meeting. The superintendent or designee will follow up with you after the meeting if action is needed. Instead of speaking at a meeting, uh, you may also send an email to the board at board at tacoma.k12.wa.us. Please contact the board office in advance of the meeting for disability accommodations. We have two different ways that folks can give public comment. Um, in no specific order, uh, written comment is one option. Uh, I don't know if we have any tonight. Not this evening. Okay, none written, none attached to the agenda. The other option, which we're jumping to right now, is verbal comment. Uh, the superintendent or designee will call your name when it's time uh, to address the school board. Please speak directly into the microphone. You may have up to uh, three minutes to share your comments. 
Uh, if there are a large number of speakers, time may be limited at the vice president's discretion. We'll go ahead. I know we have a few. Yes. Uh, public comment proceeds under board policy 1430 and under policy 1430, uh, the board president or vice president may interrupt and or terminate comments when the speaker exceeds the allotted time or when comments are abusive, obscene or irrelevant. You can find a summary of board policy 1430 on the blue cards located in the lobby and also at tacomaschools.org. Uh, this evening we have six verbal comments. The first from Courtney Underwood. Hi everyone. My name is Courtney Underwood and I am a second grade teacher with TOL this year. So I'm here to start the recommendation process for our literacy curriculum that we are hopefully adopting for SAVIS. Um, and I wanted to speak as a pilot teacher to recommend that program. It um, actively aligns with our district technology goals and integration and so being with TOL we felt that we had a plethora of people that could advocate for our students and our student populations using our one-to-one -one technology but also see how we can get our online learners moving forward in all the right directions and positively so we felt that Savas did that best um, opposed to the other one and um, as a group we actively worked to test the rigor of the curricular materials that were available online and assignable online and Savas did that best um, it also supports our LMS that we have here in our school district, which is Schoology, but also um, other LMSs if we were to ever change, um, and it integrates fairly well with that. And then lastly, um, our students were able to continue their growth, and we've got readers, we've got writers, and we have kids excited about reading and writing, so that's the goal, right? <laughs> so there's my recommendation. Thank you, Thank you Courtney. Our next speaker is Wendy Owen. Uh, good evening, my name is Wendy Owen. I am a teacher at Fern Hill and I taught a 3-4 split this year. So um, I am also speaking on behalf of recommending Savas. Um, I am speaking on the, the element of writing in particular. Um, this particular program had great diversity and differentiation in terms of how we could approach writing. And I feel like my third graders and my fourth graders, I was able to approach single tasks with both groups and they all were able to come out as improved writers in that aspect. And so because of that, I am recommending it. It also allowed them through the technology piece of it there is an element where they write into an essay scorer in the system, and it allowed them to see and feel like what SBA was like. So it gave them kind of some of those experiences. So as we approached that this week, they felt more comfortable and confident in those systems. And so for those reasons, I also am recommending Savas. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Sarah Lane. Hello, my name is Sarah Lane and I'm an instructional facilitator at Tacoma Online. I work primarily with K-5 but stretch across some K-12 things. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of recommending Savas as the English Language Arts Curriculum to be adopted. Our K-5 staff and students across the district have eagerly awaited a comprehensive English Language Arts Curriculum for some years now and this is a great time to do so, especially coming out of a pandemic and literacy needs. I asked the board to consider approving this because it's a full comprehensive curriculum um, that matches our goals of academic excellence and early learning. It includes plans for intervention and there are ways for teachers to personalize based on class needs, like selecting writing pathways needed to meet a standard. A quick standout moment as a facilitator observing a class that I'd like to share was watching a group of Tacoma Online second graders perform a reader's theater play online. Um, one of the greatest things that I think I've seen in literacy so far, and that was a text used from the Savas curriculum. Um, each student could participate no matter what their levels or capabilities, and there's nothing quite like seeing huge student smiles when they're successful at being readers. Um, something that stood out to me with that was that was a genuine text by a published author that was adapted for students to access. Students also each have their own copies of texts and these published works in the books that they can notate on and continue to refer to. 
The ability to differentiate with digital tools is also a key component as mentioned. And teachers will be able to access and analyze assessment data and take action immediately based on that. So in summary, I encourage the board to adopt the curriculum for our K-5 teachers and students district-wide. We look forward to having a full curriculum to meet our needs and to continue our mission of educating our young readers and writers. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Brittany Siolik. Hi, my name is Brittany Siolik. I teach over at Ginny Reed Elementary in fourth grade this year, but I'm a 4-5 loop. So I actually have a group of students for two years. And I also am recommending SAVIS as our um, ELA curriculum adoption this year based on two really big key components that it was culturally re relevant and very rigorous. My students enjoyed reading the text multiple days and just dove right in. And then it was awesome to be able for them to see themselves in the text. They could feel what the characters were feeling and just excited to read. That was a huge insight for me. And my students were engaged the entire week, not just one day, multiple days of rigorous learning for them, as well as just being able to have authentic conversations with their peers and feel heard about what they were reading and writing. And every day there's a writing component, so our students are reading and writing daily, which is something that is just a huge, huge achievement because we know that that's a really hard feat for them, but they enjoyed it. I really loved how different the types of texts were and how they were really thought about inside the curriculum itself. They were intentionally selected, and I just thought that was such a great component of SAVIS. And so thank you so much for your time, and I, I hope you guys select SAVIS as well. Thank you. Our next speaker is Christopher Yevalor. Uh, good evening, superintendent and board members. My name is Christopher Ubalar, and I'm here to speak about licensed health care coverage at elementary schools. Uh, ten months ago, just before entering kindergarten, our five-year-old son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease that requires our son to receive insulin with every snack or meal for the rest of his life. Not receiving insulin is ultimately fatal. Receiving too much insulin is just as dangerous. That means, as a young child, full-time attention is required for his well-being. Among the many things we learned at the hospital was that his neighborhood school, Grant Center for the Expressive Arts, did not have a nurse five days a week. In fact, only 11 of Tacoma's 36 elementary schools had full-time licensed care. Therefore, he'd either need to attend a so-called regional school that had full-time coverage, or we would have to go to his school several times a day and provide his care ourselves. Fortunately, at the last minute, we received notice that a nurse would be on site each day at Grant Center, uh, and it would be a regional site in 2022 and 23. His progress this school year has been amazing. His health is steady. He loves the school and going to school. He has a caring rapport with his nurses. He's made many new friends, and by and large, he's living the life of a normal kid. There are plenty of challenges ahead, but his care team at Grant Center has lifted an enormous weight off our shoulders. Unfortunately, it seems likely that Grant's full-time care coverage will not continue next school year. For my son's well-being and the well-being of many other children that could potentially benefit, I would request that Grant remain a regional site going forward. It makes sense on many levels. First, it's already set up to be one as it has been for the entire school year, and it has brand new health facilities, being a new uh, facility itself. Adding grant creates a more even geographical distribution of regional sites. Without it, there are no sites in the North End neighborhood and only one in Council District 2, Northeast Tacoma Elementary. Uh, with each additional regional site, the load on existing sites is eased, and each student is that much safer. Third, grant CEA's focus on arts integration is unique by design and it very much resonates with our son and makes Grant a popular site for choice enrollment. If Grant does not remain a regional site, DPS would be excluding my son and other children with special health needs from access to this experience. Finally, I'd like to point out that TPS's current strategic plan has health and safety as a pillar. Not only that, but the budget development criteria states we will put the safety of our students at the forefront of all decisions. What's more fundamental to student safety than access to medical care? Making Grant a permanent regional site is a step in the right direction. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our last speaker this evening is Candace Cooper. Good evening, everyone. 
My name is Candace Bryant Cooper, and I used to work for this district as a behavior specialist and a school counselor. I retired in 2011, and I started employment here in, 1980s, in the 1980s. I worked in several different schools, elementary, middle, and high school. And I also worked at Gray Middle School for approximately six years. I am not at liberty to state names tonight, but I am gravely, gravely concerned about four African-American teachers that are at Gray. Um, they have been mistreated for the whole year. I've been in, t I know two of them. I've been in two of their classrooms. I've witnessed how they taught, how they managed their classrooms, how they interacted with their students, how they developed positive relationships and motivated them to want to learn. These teachers are, they set the structure and positive climate for the population of the students that, that attend Gray. I am baffled, I am shocked, I am hurt. I am just in disbelief at the way these teachers have been treated. There has been a discipline letter placed in one of the teacher's files. She has been at Gray for 25 years. She graduated from Lincoln High School and was their track star. This situation with her happened in the beginning of the year, the first two weeks of school, where administrators didn't even have a chance to get to know staff or to establish a rapport with them. The other teacher is on a leave of absent, she, absence. She is a seasoned teacher and has been working at Gray for 20 years or more. She was just allowed to come back to Jason Lee to sub I am asking that the discipline letter from the first teacher's file be removed. And the second teacher, I am asking that she be restored to her classroom. Her students really need her. I am asking you to please look into these concerns of these four phenomenal teachers. Thank you. Thank you. I believe you said it was the last one. Yes, that's correct. Perfect. We'll be moving forward to item number 10, which is the consent agenda. We have a motion to adopt. I move to adopt. Been moved and seconded. Uh, any comments or concerns about the agenda? Any changes? All right, all those in favor of adopting the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Passes 3-0. We'll be moving on to item 11, which is policy matters. There are none this evening. Item 12 is the financial report. Uh, the district's next quarterly financial report is planned for May 25th, 2023. Uh, monthly financial statements can be found on the district website at www.tacomaschools.org backslash departments backslash business and finance. Moving forward to item number 13, curriculum and instruction. Item 13.1 is the approval of K-5 ELA curriculum adoption and purchase. Good evening. Hey. I thought I wasn't going to go first, so, but I'm ready. All right. The Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning recommends the Board of Directors approve the adoption and purchase of Savas My View in the amount of four million four hundred and twenty thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars and ninety seven cents, including tax. I move to adopt item 13.1. I second. Any comments or concerns? Questions? Mr. Vice President, I just want to uh, thank all the staff uh, that contributed to this process. I want to thank uh, Ms. Larson for her leadership and, and the entire CNI team. I want to thank all of you classroom teachers that participated Absolutely. and gave your feedback. Mm -hmm. I know it's not easy, especially when you have such high stakes, which is we have kids learning right in front. and. Um, so many people participated in this process. Um, and I'm just, it's very important that we put culturally relevant materials in front of our kids, that we have the expertise of our teachers that say these are the, the, the right ones, 
Um, and so I am extremely grateful, and I just want to say thank you to you, Tammy, for leading and shepherding us through this. Um, so I hope you consider my comments as you make your vote. I will. I just want to add, I want to thank like the way that you've helped the board be informed as well throughout this process. Um, and I think it was the last board meeting that you gave a really in-depth presentation um, yes. that was extremely informative and really helpful. So um, I echo the superintendent's comments to everyone here that spoke and all the teachers and staff that participated. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad somebody appreciated the 68 slides. <laughs> I liked all the slides. All the slides. Yeah, and just for the community, it's a very long process to adopt curriculum, like to research, to find, to, to, to pilot, to get the right folks on the pilot to make sure that students are really benefiting. So I just echo the thanks um, that have already been, been stated for sure. Good. All right, well, it's been moved and seconded. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions? It passes 3-0. We have the K-5 ELA curriculum. Thank you. Item 13.2, approval of the Head Start non-federal share waiver. Uh, the superintendent, on behalf of the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, recommends that the Board of Directors approve the district's request for a waiver of the Head Start non-federal share requirement in the amount of $847,596, funding source, Office of Head Start. I move to adopt item 13.2. I second it. Any comments or concerns? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I imagine that there are none opposed. <laughs> so we are all good. It passes 3 0. Um, item 13.3 approval of acceptance of grant award from College Spark, Washington. The superintendent, on behalf of the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, recommends that the Board of Directors approve the acceptance of the grant award for from College Spark, Washington in the amount of $90,000. Funding source, College Spark, Washington. We have a motion. I make a motion to approve 13.3. Second. Any comments or concerns about this? Questions? All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Unopposed, no abstentions, passes 3-0. Moving on to item 14, business matters. 14.1, approval of acceptance of mental health interventions and restorative justice program grants from the city of Tacoma for January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2024. The deputy superintendent on behalf of the director of Whole Child recommends that the board of directors approve the grants awarded to Tacoma Public Schools from the city of Tacoma in the amount of $259,000 to support mental health interventions and restorative justice programs from January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2024, and expenditure of funds in accordance with accepted guidelines. Funding source, City of Tacoma. I move to adopt item 14.1. I second. Any comments, questions, or concerns about this? All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 None opposed, no abstentions, passes three to zero. 14.2, uh, approval of bid acceptance for the Professional Development Center Accessibility Improvements Project. My bad, Chris, I said that fast. My fault, my fault. Uh, this is uh, part of our 2020 bond and our continuous process to make ADA improvements across the district. The Chief Operating Officer recommends that a Board of Directors accept the bid for the Professional Development Center Accessibility Improvements Project from Rainier Asphalt Ceiling LLC in the amount of $332,894, excluding sales tax. I have a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve 14.2. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any comments, questions, or concerns about this? Any questions specific to Chris? All those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed, no abstentions, passes 3-0. Uh, moving forward to item 15, which is other business. 15.1 is the adoption of a resolution number 2121 and acceptance of a contract between Tacoma School District number 10 and Corsmo Construction for the Grant Center for the Expressive Arts School Replacement. Uh, this agenda item and the following one is when we have final closure of a major capital project and when the general contractor has met all the terms and conditions within the contract. The Chief Operating Officer recommends that the Board of Directors adopt resolution number 2121 for the acceptance of project completion and approve the acceptance of contract with Cosmo Construction for the Grant Center for Expressive Arts School Replacement. 
I move to adopt item 15.1. I second. Like, do we roll call vote this? Yes, we can. Our, okay. yeah, our practice is to do a roll call vote for resolutions. Uh, so calling for a roll call vote to approve resolution 2121 and simultaneously accept the contract between TSD and Corsbo Construction. Uh, Vice President Strozier, how do you vote? Aye. Director Keating, how do you vote? Aye. Director Leon, how do you vote? Aye. The resolution and the contract are both passed. Perfect. Moving on to 15.2, which is the adoption of resolution 2122 and acceptance of contract between Tacoma School District Number 10 and Pease and Son for the Mary Lyon Elementary School replacement. The Chief Operating Officer recommends that the Board of Directors adopt resolution number 2122 for the acceptance of project completion and approve the acceptance of contract with Pease and Sons for the Mary Lyon Elementary School replacement. I move to adopt item 15.2. I second. We have another roll call vote here. Yes. Vice President Strozier, how do you vote? Aye. Director Keating, how do you vote? Aye. Director Leon, how do you vote? Aye. The resolution and uh, agenda item passes. Thanks, Chris. 15.3, uh, approval of Washington Interscholastic Activities Association, or WIA, membership renewal and school board resolution uh, for the 2023-2024 school year. The Assistant Superintendent of K-12 Support on behalf of the Student Life Director recommends that the Board of Directors approve the renewal of the membership between WIAA and Tacoma Public Schools from September 2023 to August 2024. Funding source, Student Life. I move to adopt 15.3. Second. Any comments or concerns about this renewal of this membership here that we got at WIA? No? All right, Malik, is this a, we good here or? Uh, we can do a typical Might vote. Well, yeah. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed, no abstentions. Passes 3-0. Thank you. Good. 15.4, mm -hmm. uh, approval of acceptance of floorball kit donation from the Seattle Kraken. Here comes Roz. <laughs> She's here. The Chief Financial Officer recommends that the Board of Directors approve acceptance of the donation of four floorball kits valued at $57,977 from the Seattle Kraken and the One Roof Foundation. I move to adopt item 15.4. A second. All right, any comments or questions or concerns? I've got a question of just, is floorball a version of hockey without ice? Yes. Okay. Yeah. With sticks and all? Um, I'm not sure about the stick aspect of it, but I would imagine that there's some kind of stick associated with it. <laughs> there must be. <laughs> Only because my yep. students attend a school, in which the donation was under 50000 so it didn't reach a board vote. But mm. uh, yes, sticks, mock goalie with a little hole at the bottom, and they mm. you know, makeshift puck into the thing. Very good. Nice. Good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, it's just been exciting. <laughs> I'm just excited because kids don't have to be in Minnesota to learn how to play hockey. That's really good. There you go. Well, it's been moved and seconded, if I remember correctly. So uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Not opposed, no extensions. Passes three to zero. Thanks for us. Moving on to item number 16, board reports or board comments and reports. Anybody want to go first? It's only three of us. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I, I can start. Directly uh, on, so on you. Uh, just thanks to the board and the, all the administrative staff uh, as I was gone the uh, past few weeks doing volunteer work in Peru. So thank you for everybody uh, for letting me do that. And uh, a lot of good educational work we did down there. And then I was at the um, Silas um, Stadium soccer playoff game a few days ago. Silas won one to zero. Very exciting, but very proud of both uh, both those teams. And um, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. I wanted to give a shout out. I attended. I managed to make it to and spend money at. <clears throat> I'll just say that at the Lincoln, Mount Tahoma, and Silas plant sales. Um, which were awesome. And actually, I almost got the gate closed on me at Lincoln because they sold out in a day and a half of all of their stuff. So fortunately, Kale was kind enough to let me through the fence enough to buy some geraniums. But, um, and just the student participation, I mean, they were um, packed. Like all, like Silas, the greenhouse was packed, Mount T was packed. It was really, really cool to see just the different um, resources and activities and um, things that the students were working on too. And I know I'm not gonna get it right, but at 
Mount T, they have a water filtration system that I just remember they also have at um, Camp Seymour, because when I take my kid to fifth grade camp, I got to see it there. But it's, um, it has um, fish in there, and it's actually feeding um, and watering additional plants. It's a really cool, I know there's a really formal name for it, but sorry, y'all, I don't know it. But that was just really cool, um, and there were just students, um, there were lots and lots of students, and all of them were so gracious and excited to see people there, so I want to give them a shout out. I also got to see, um, go to the Hilltop Artist Sale, um, so it was a packed day on Saturday last weekend, um, and it was just really cool to see how the, the students that per, um, participate in both the Hilltop Heritage and Silas Glassblowing programs to see their art and to see them selling their art and just running the, the whole show. Um, it's just, it was a really cool day to, just to see what our students are actually doing and the ways our staff are engaging our students. So big shout out to them. Um, and um, let's see what else. There was, uh, yesterday was the Traffic and Safety Committee meeting um, and Safe Routes to Schools um, with this through the city of Tacoma is doing lots and lots of things. There's um, this month is bike and roll to school month, um, which I love that inclusive language about moving and getting to school. Um, so that's happening. There was an event at Edison Elementary yesterday around bikes that the city um, put on. So there's just a lot of really um, important, great um, collaboration that happens through um, the city of Tacoma and the district um, and the operations team, the um, so Chris's team, and anyways, there's lots of really cool things in the health department. There's lots of really good things happening there. And yeah, I guess that's it. I can't remember, I'm sure there's something else, but nice. that's it. Well, if, if it comes to you, just interrupt yeah. me during my very lengthy You have the gavel, I'm not board. interrupting. Yeah, and I'm gonna hold it while I do my report, no kidding. Uh, a couple things happened for me since the last board meeting I'm excited to share about. Um, the first thing, I was able to attend uh, a RELOC conference, which is the Regional Executive Leaders of Color Conference put on by one of our ESDs. Uh, we had uh, presentations by uh, a whole bunch of great folks, uh, Dr. Conrad Webster, uh, Aaron Jones, Jamal Canley, uh, they were all there. Uh, it was a great time to be in just in community with folks who are all like-minded about moving this needle forward for education. So it's a good time. Um, I was able to attend the Charting Our Future conference. I, the cool thing about that was I had the opportunity to be a moderator for the first time in my career, which I always wanted to be a talk show host, and I had this opportunity. Um, I was extremely nervous, but what made it made me less nervous was the fact that the person I was talking to was a 2020 grad of Lincoln High School. And uh, <laughs> she's currently at UWT. And we had a conversation about how uh, things like assimilation impact students. Um, and she talked about some of the great work she's doing uh, at UWT and some of her future plans. Uh, but it was a great time to be up on stage and, and have a conversation with her, uh, Brandy. Uh, I can't remember what day it was, uh, but I think it was this week or last week, probably last week. There was a superhero carnival at Whitman. Uh, elementary and the reason why I went is because uh, obviously my kids go there and I had to count tickets um, but it was it was <laughs> it was wild because you would think that there was uh, well obviously they had the carnival but you think there was some sort of celebrity there everybody came in all students and parents had on capes and they were playing homemade carnival games throughout the school to raise money for the PTA it was pretty awesome good popcorn good pizza um, just good vibes all the way uh, throughout uh, Cinco de Mayo, uh, we had the Narrative Changer slash Game Time slash TPS late night event at Stewart. And I need to tip my hat to our safety and security team for being present. I need to tip my hat to the uh, TPD officer that was present outside, but I really want to tip my hat to the students that were present. Now, when we do Narrative Changer events, we get maybe 15, 20 kids. When I walked into the gym late, uh, it was 300 kids in that gym. Um, sitting in the stands, um, having conversation from spe um, with speakers, uh, and then once the speakers were over, you just saw this flood of students on the court. They had a three-on-three -three competition. They had a three-point competition. They had uh, young ladies playing volleyball in the other gym. They had a space for young folks to just sit and talk, color, do art. So tip of the hat to Don Kreider for tipping his uh, for opening the the space uh, at at Stewart, and he mentioned to the young folks, if you act right, I'll do this every Friday. Um, now, I'm not sure how, how that'll work, 
<laughs> but um, you know, his heart's in the right place. So um, yeah, it was it was a good time to be in the space. And, and, and Cinco de Mayo, who knows what's going on in the streets? But one thing I can guarantee you is 300 plus kids safe on a Friday night, and that's what's important to us. Um, finally, uh, I spent time at Brian Montessori groundbreaking yesterday. I got to dig some dirt. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I got the pass. I followed in in, in Superintendent Garcia's. Uh, uh, shoes and pass the big shovel to the kids and then watch them scoop dirt and I had to hold the little red red <laughs> shovel. Anyway, that was fun. They were kids were excited, families were excited, that community is excited. So I, I'm pumped to see what the building looks like when it's done. Uh, and I'm, I'm absolutely positive that that environment is going to be one where our young people flourish. So uh, that was good. That's all I got. Anybody else got anything that they want to share? Mm -hmm. One thing I forgot, um, just want to thank Mr. Neal and all the staff around getting uh, fully staffed uh, athletic trainers for all the high schools, so I'm pretty sure they're all there now. I met a bunch of them, and uh, great um, safe care for all the kids there. And apparently, I just found out that the Silas uh, Athletic Training Club team finished second either in the regions or the state, or was it the country? It was in some, some large competition. Do you know what it was? It was some large competition. I, 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 uh, I'm right in the same space as you, Director Leon. I okay. know it was an exciting event, and, uh, but I'm not sure if it was regional or state. Okay. They, they came in second. Yeah. Great. That's good. I did think of one other thing. Yeah. Sorry. So the robotics team for Sammy and Soda, I believe it's Sammy, just Sammy? Soda bots. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, they are in a competition on Saturday, so at the uh, King County Aquatic Center in Federal Way. Um, I have no idea what time, so you'll have to look it up. But, um, oh no, excuse me, eight to four, I think. So um, I'm gonna do my best to go and watch um, the robotics, robotics team compete. And it's a state competition, is what I believe to be true. So, and they have, they were here in the state, state competition last year, I believe. So. Um, anyways, I know nothing about robotics, but I'm going to go find out some stuff on Saturday. Well, do share. Do share. All right. Uh, well, that's it for uh, board comments and board reports. So we're moving on to item number 17, which is the announcement of the next regular board meetings. May 18th, 2023, we have a study session at 6 p.m. Uh, May 25th is our next business meeting in this room, and June 8th is the one following that. Um, with that, if there is nothing else uh, that anybody has to say, uh, this meeting is adjourned.